So OpenAI has just released uh, like, you know, kind of like a public version of their GPT chat client that you can kind of log into their website and talk to an AI and get it to do all sorts of cool stuff for you. And what a lot of people are finding is that you can get it to kind of write code for you. So I tried to experiment around with this and found some crazy stuff. So a couple examples, I was able to create this very basic but plausible, albeit non-functioning, uh, calculator user interface as a starting point if I wanted to build my own calculator. It's a great place to start from. Um, I was also able to, for example, um, build this image viewer where I point it towards a directory full of images and I'm able to browse forward and backward through that directory of images. Um, another example, I tried to make a clock. So I first it created this basic digital clock for me. And then I was able to ask the code, or I was able to ask the chatbot to revise the code and create an analog clock. And it did it. And I, you know, with a little bit of modification, obviously it didn't come out fully perfect, but I was so close to the finish line with these things. It did not take me more than maybe five minutes to figure out and get these things up and running after taking the code that the AI had spit out to me and just modifying it slightly. So let's check it out and see what we can do here. The first thing we're going to need to do is go to python.org and download Python. So I'm going to go to the download section here and I'm going to scroll down to find Python 3.9.13. This is the latest one that has an installer in the 3.9 uh, version. And um, I'm just choosing this one because it corresponds with the version of Houdini I use, but you could probably use whatever version you want. I'm going to choose the Windows 64-bit installer here, and I'm just going to install that onto the uh, desktop. And once that downloads, I'm going to give it a double click and do the old install. I'm going to actually add it to my Python 3.9 to my path right here. So I'm going to tick this option and choose install now. I'll just authorize that, and in a couple minutes, I'll be back and this will be installed. All right, so that has finished installing. I'm gonna click close and I'm gonna open up a command prompt. I'm just gonna to go to my search bar here and type CMD, hit enter, and we're gonna just make sure Python's here. So we're gonna say Python and then minus minus version. And this comes back with Python 3.9.13. So that means that we got it successfully installed. That's cool. The next thing we're gonna to need to create an application is, uh, with a user interface is PyQt5. And so we can install that right here uh, pretty easily using pip. So we're gonna say pip, install PyQt5. PyQt5 is just a library that allows you to create user interfaces in Python so that you can have like a window that you can interact with, etc. Um, and it looks like it has successfully installed all those packages. So that pip install is a really nice way to quickly install packages that you might need for Python. So I'm going to close this window now. And the next thing I'm going to need is Visual Studio Code. I already have it installed, but you'll want to actually download this and install it yourself. Next thing we're going to need is to actually create a folder that we're going to do our project in. So I'm just going to right click on the desktop and say new folder and we'll call this um, AI app. Um, and I'm just going to uh, now open up Visual Studio Code and direct it to this, this folder so we can start working it. So I'm just going to open up Visual Studio, say file, open folder, and we'll go to the desktop and choose the AI app folder. And now it's going to open up a new window and ask if I want to trust it. And we'll say yes. And let's just make this bigger. And you can see I've got our little folder here and I can start kind of making uh, files. So let's add a Python file. We're going to say, uh, I just get this little page icon with a plus on it. And we're going to call this um, AI underscore app dot PY. So putting a dot PY at the end lets um, Visual Studio Code know that you're uh, making a, a Python application. So now we need some code. Let's actually, I'm just going to um, kind of put this over on the left hand side of my screen and get the browser over on the right hand side of the screen. And then I'm going to go to chat.openai.com and it's going to ask me to log in. I'm just going to log in using my Gmail account, I think is what I used. So I'm going to do that. All right, so let's see if we can get this thing to create an application, like a drawing application for us, for example. So I'm going to give it some, uh, I'm going to give it some language. I'm going to ask it to do, let's say, let's say, um, uh, provide the PyQt5 code needed to create an interactive drawing application and then hit enter. And it says, here's a sample PyQt5 code you can use to create a simple drawing application. So it's creating a drawing widget, setting the window size. It's writing all this out, giving us mouse event press and, you know, mouse uh, uh, events and stuff like that. And then the final execution, it gives us a little bit of a description about it. Super cool. So now that I've got this code, I'm just going to copy it. 
Now we'll find out like this isn't always perfect. So sometimes it, sometimes it has a little bit of an issue you might need to correct. But um, when you're working with Visual Studio Code, you can kind of see what's wrong and correct it pretty easily usually. So I'm just gonna copy this code and I'm gonna paste it in here. And we can see that we've already got some issues here. First off, it's not finding our PyQt5 implementation. And that's because my Visual Studio code is actually pointed towards my Cinema 4D uh, Python implementation. I just wanna click this little thing down here in the corner and actually choose my Python 3.9.13 implementation uh, just to make sure that it can grab all these uh, PyQt5 modules we installed. And you can see they all turned green, so that's all good. And the next thing we need to do is open up a terminal and try and execute it and see what happens because I don't see any other errors here. So let's go to terminal and say new terminal. And then down here, we should be in the AI app folder. So I can just type in Python um, and we're going to call it AI underscore app dot PY um, and then hit enter. And nothing's going to happen because I didn't save my file. So I'm just going to hit control S and then come down here to my um, terminal again, hit the up arrow that just grabs the last command you uh, that you punched in and then hit enter again. And you can see here that this drawing application window pops up. Let's try drawing. And you can see I'm actually drawing with my mouse. This is code that was, cre I didn't have to do anything. I didn't, to, I didn't have to change anything about it other than make sure my Visual Studio code implementation was running correctly. This is absolutely insane. What an insane learning tool. What a time to be trying to learn how to code on your own because you could clearly use this example and start to dissect it and make it into other things. Um, one of the examples that I tried last night was to create a clock. Let's try creating a clock real quick. I'm going to add another document. We're going to call it clock.py. And in here, I'm going to just go over to my chat bot and I'm just going to say, uh, uh, please provide the pi qt5 code needed to create a clock a clock and then hit enter and see what we get so here's some pi qt5 code you can use to create a simple clock application I'm using PyQt5 because I found that PyQt5, like this language model seems to work a little bit better with PyQt5 for some reason. It's like syntax, it just seems to like understand it better. PyQt6 is newer, it just doesn't seem to, um, I, I had to do a lot more corrections with the uh, PyQt, trying to create PyQt6 examples. So that's why I chose PyQt5. So I'm gonna grab all this code, I'm gonna hit the copy code button, bring it over here into clock.py, paste it, Looks like there are no errors, except for QFont has an error. I'm just gonna save this real quick. And QFont is giving me an error. QFont is not defined by PyLance. I'm gonna just, so when I run into an issue like this, I just go over here and just do a quick search for uh, QFont in, um, in, in, in Google and try and find like, you know, the uh, QFont class. So QFont is a part of the, part of the GUI so I think I might just need to, so what I'm seeing here is it looks like it's part of the, the GUI module. So I'm going to see if I can grab Q font right here and see. Yeah. So I, so basically what I did was I, it looks like it's part of the GUI model. And so that means that when we're importing these modules, it just didn't grab the Q font module that it needed to implement down here. So this is kind of like a, a thing that, that I've noticed that it has a hard time with is it won't always grab every single implementation or every single module that it needs, but it's pretty easy to correct. You can see that I just had to go look up the QFont class and figure out what um, what uh, part of the, uh, you know, what module is a part of and just add it to the imports here and it should all work. So let's see how this goes. I'm gonna go uh, down here and, oh, I'm gonna close out of this app first, the drawing app, we're gonna close that one. And here we're gonna say Python and then we're gonna say, uh, what did we call this? It's called clock.py. And I didn't save it. Let's just hit control S clock.py and hit enter down on the terminal. And you can see that this has created a user interface with us for a clock. This is crazy. This is so crazy that it's able to do this. Um, I'm just so excited. I hope that uh, you all found this pretty exciting and I hope that you have fun. Maybe you can use this to learn how to create your own applications if you want to. And um, I just think that the possibilities are endless as, as a learning tool, as a uh, as, as an actual tool to help you in production. Because um, you can start creating these different applications and breaking them apart, dissecting them and putting them together. And man, I just, I'm, I'm just blown away by what we can do, what this, what the, what these tools can do these days. It's just crazy. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will catch you again later. See ya.